So I have one hip ornament that's just a hippo hippo. Uh huh. Ballerina hippo. I have a big glass pink hippo that's just like a lifeguard for reasons I don't understand, but my nephew got it for me. And I have a big purple glass hippo that looks like the hippo balloon from the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. He's got like a breeding program. Four hippo ornaments. And actually, I have two more that don't go on the tree. I have one, the musical one, plays. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas with the br arm broken off. But I don't know where that one went. I can't find it. Yes! Thank you, God! And then I have one that's like a rocking hippo on like rockers of holly. But it's way too heavy to go on the tree. It weighs like a ton and a half, so... We have, you gave us a Christmas present this week. You gave I, us all new, you gave us all the best ringtone ever. What part of that is your ringtone? Well, let's, let's see. Um, what was happening when, when this was going on? Um, I can post the link that he was looking at. Let me, give me a second to find it. He was looking, uh, Tom loves kitties. This is your boyfriend, he loves, Tom. Loves, loves cats and mm. kitties of any kind. And he is unable to control himself when faced with kitties, which he's in a lot of trouble at Christmas because my nephew just got a kitten. And he is not going to be able to hold it together the whole day with that kitten around. Like he is not going to be able to keep his cool at all. So while he was looking at some stuff online, you pulled out the video recorder. As I tend to do. I'm posting the link right now. There we go. He was unaware of this. So this is what happened. Crazy kitty! How can you make me pee? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Whenever my phone goes off now, it's crazy kitty! Ow. Crazy kitty! And that's what he see. Like, if he sees a picture of a cat... If he sees a cat, if you say the word cat. Hey guys, I love you. I was just what was he say? Crazy kitty, get out of the book. What are you doing in there? You're making it very hard to read. What are you going to do? Turn it up. I have, actually, I got it because he bought me my Christmas tree last year. I got a kitty in a Santa hat on a blanket ornament. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the hell? I just what the hell is he talking? He's talking to pictures of cats. You you can kind of see it if you look carefully in the video. He actually like reaches out and like scratches my monitor. He loves the kitties. He's partial to Persians. So now when I'm at, at in England and in Magfest. My phone will proclaim, crazy kitty! He's famous. Said that, is the, that is the best ringtone. Everyone, I encourage you to get it. He was not super amused with me. <laughs> I wonder why. I don't know if you can hear on the, like very early on in the video, he won't look at the camera. He realizes the camera's on and he says, if there's a fucking camera on me right now, you're going out the fucking window. Yeah, I love you, but you're going out the window. No offense, I love you. Out the fucking window. <laughs> so, you know. Crazy kitty! And then somebody replied on Twitter about it, and he said, sorry, Tara fell out the window. And they weren't sure if he was serious. And I was like, no, I'm fine. He was only <laughs> kidding. He would never do that. <laughs> okay. So. We he have... Yeah, he's, he puts up with quite a bit. He, he does. I don't know what he's doing with me. Oh, stop. No, I'm terrible. Like, he'll be in, he'll be like dead asleep and I tickle his feet. Jumps and it's hilarious, but horrible because he would do that. <laughs> you, apparently. Yeah, I know. I'm a really bad person. Anyway. All right. So it is time for the live bit and are you ready because we got we have two very magical stories 
at the end magical tonight. Magical good? Probably not magical good. Probably not. But they are amazing. That's what I give you every week. Things to be amazed by. We will let you down. We will make you cry. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, What the crazy. Fuck is Wrong With You? And, you know, you've got your tree up, the holidays are, are underway, so it, it's only appropriate we start with a holiday story. I don't know how this happened, but everybody loves that Will Ferrell movie, Elf. I've never even seen it you all never the way. Have? It's, it's, it's become like, you know, like a, another little tradition or something. I don't know how that happened, but. Yeah. I've never actually seen it all the way through. But. Somebody got into the spirit. Well, I guess this guy has seen it all the way through. Or if not, he at least got to the dressing up part. Louisiana man, 34, dressed as Buddy the Elf, arrested for drunk driving. <clears throat> he doesn't look as happy as I'm familiar with Buddy the Elf. No, looking. he doesn't. He looks fairly, fairly grumpy. Yeah. Like the grumpy cat version. Yeah. yeah. Buddy the um, Elf. So a man dressed as a Christmas elf was arrested yesterday for drunk driving. Brandon Touche... Really? It's kind of amazing. <clears throat> anyway, Brandon Touche was nabbed at 3 a.m. Sunday uh, by Louisiana cops and booked into a Lafayette Parish and Sheriff's Office jail for operating a vehicle while intoxicating and driving at an excessive speed. Police reported that Touche, a Lafayette resident, smelled of booze, was unsteady on his feet, was slurring his words during questioning, Touche, seen as above mugshot, was photographed by jail officials wearing a green elf's costume with a white furry collar. Touche's outfit appears to mimic the one worn by Will Ferrell in Elf. Do you know... Wasn't Adam Sandler's name in the water boy Bobby Boucher? Boucher, yeah. He was from Louisiana. I feel like we've got a sequel on our hands. All I know is this guy is going into the drunk tank dressed like this. Yes. That's not That's a place you want to... Kind of like being a boy named Sue. If you don't know how to fight, you're about to learn. Yeah! Quickly! Yeah, I, I just, I can imagine there's some guy with a headlock going, Sing the song! Sing the fucking song! I'm just saying... Thought like, Will Ferrell had hair. Sing the fucking song! A Waterboy sequel featuring an angry <laughs> Christmas elf at the mall. Someone like Henry Winkler taunting him that the Easter Bunny's better. I think we can make this happen. Oh, must we? I don't know if we could get Kathy Bates back. I think she came to her senses. <sighs> okay. Um, you know, it's starting to come up a point where we get sequels with a twist, which is disturbing for me with our, with our stories. But uh, yeah, sequel with a twist is where this one comes in. Um, so we have an issue with people keep putting meat down their pants. Again? It's, it's, I don't think this ever really stops. I think this is a year-round... I'm pretty sure someone thinks this is their culture. Why would that be your culture? That's not a marinade! <laughs> well, it's funny you should add that because... That's not what a dry rub means. Because the store where the meat got, got shoplifted from... Didn't seem to think it was a bad set state of affairs. <gasps> Store sells meat found in shoplifters' pants. Oh, come on. Charlottetown, Canada. Grocery stores feeling the heat after selling meat found in a shoplifter's pants. 
Jeffrey Arthur Free in 29 pled guilty on Tuesday to shoplifting charges after he was caught putting the package of meat in his pants in a store bathroom. Been sentenced to 94 days, been banned from Atlantic Superstores. However, it's what the store employees did after Freeham was caught that has some incense. During his trial, prosecutor learned that the evidence had been placed back on store shelves. That's not sanitary. <clears throat> Someone bought it. That's the thing. Someone bought it. That's that's the Oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. Derek, you have some explaining to do. Some, this is your fault, Derek. You you were responsible for Canada. Everything that happens in Canada is Derek's <clears throat> fault. Especially Rob Ford, since it's Toronto. Why would you resell that? That's disgusting. Would you? I mean, because that's, that's the first question I would ask is, would you buy the pants meat? Well, no. Then why do you want somebody else to buy the meat? Like, that's the argument I had to have with my manager at Spencer's when he wanted to resell return vibrators. Would you buy a used vibrator? Well, right. no. Then why did you try to sell them? You can't sell mm. those. Th Once it's been in someone's pants, it's no longer suitable <laughs> for consumption. Because you just don't know what's in there. That's just good etiquette. That's like a cavern of horrors. Anyone who's inclined to put meat in their pants to begin with... There could be other things lurking in there that you just don't know. Yeah. That is, that is like, down the rabbit hole. But and... once it's been down someone's pants, it's no longer suitable for public sale. <laughs> no. Uh, but I just love the prosecutor. It had to come up in the trial. That's the best part. Okay, so where's the uh, where's the evidence? We sold it. I feel like that wouldn't keep. Anyway, like you weren't going to be able to enter that into evidence anyway, because by the time things go to trial. Well, some sort of record of it or. Yeah, you take a picture. There's no way you're keeping that meat until the trial. That's you just. Put it in the freezer, I guess. It's not like. Eventually, you're going to have to take it out of the freezer and it's going to smell really bad. <laughs> it's never getting eaten. OK, it doesn't matter. Do you want that in the courtroom? <laughs> Maybe. Like, I imagine courtrooms smell bad enough. I've been in courtrooms. They don't smell good. Anywhere you have, like, large amounts of drunk drivers at once is not a good smelling place. Has Tom ever been to Japan? Not, not that I know of. Are you sure? I mean, I've only known him for a year, so... <laughs> Japanese man stole $185,000 to feed 120 cats gourmet food. This Japanese man took this to a whole different level. He went on a year-long stealing and burglary spree, making a total of $185,000 over 19 million yen just to feed 120 cats. And not just ordinary cat food, but to keep them on a gourmet diet. Oh, there's some lucky kitties. Of course, now we know... Kings! Demizu himself was unemployed, which, again, adds to our understanding of why he had to steal to keep up the Gourney pet food expenses. He kept one cat at his home and in western Japan and 20 more in a nearby warehouse, but he didn't stop there. He was also feeding 100 more stray cats that lived in the neighborhood. Wow. <clears throat> If you are going to amass $185,000. You know, I'm, I'm a cat person. I love cats. But if I had that kind of money, there are other things I'd be spending it on. Like, those cats would still get some good food. They'd be getting the fancy feast. <laughs> but they'd be still getting cat food. Yes. And not getting Jimmy Choo's. Yes. Don't, yeah, the, the, the kitty, the kitty food is for the, the, not, the, what do you, 
my dad used to do this. We we always had cats when I was a kid and uh, he used to make our sandwiches for lunch in the morning for school before he woke us up for breakfast. And inevitably, like, my cat had him trained. And one slice of meat would go on the sandwich, one would go to the cat. One on the sandwich, one to the cat. And you can never figure out why the cat was always following him around. <laughs> Because pu- for all public eyes, he hated the cats. Wanted nothing to do with them. It was always, get this forlorn-looking cat away from me. It was always the forlorn cat. And, you know, but as soon as you'd turn around, he was petting the cat and feeding him cold cuts. And we're like, gosh, I wonder why the cat loves you so much. Because he gets half a pound of cold cuts a day. <laughs> well, it's not a cat anymore. It's more like a furry balloon at that point. But he wasn't robbing banks to give the cat cold no. cuts. Man, if I was the if I was on the receipt just wondering why we were going through five pounds cold cuts a week. If I was on someone who stole from me and they'd be like, what did he steal for? He was feeding cats. Aw. He was feeding cats gourmet <laughs> cat food. Oh. Uh, he was feeding 120 cats gourmet cat food. A hundred of which were feral stray cats. Which that's just not helping anything. No. That's amassing like this army to his, t- and they're telling the other cats too. You know it. Oh yeah. He's all it. You, it, you like it, you cannot feed the feral cats. You want to help the feral stray cats? You bring them to a shelter that will find them a home. You don't just give them food because they will form a know. pride. Eventually, they will get bold enough to start and they taking will keep down, on producing more feral stray cats that will. Die. And eventually they are going to get get the numbers enough and the, the work up their confidence to take down a small child. Like the Serengeti on the back streets. There's a uh, there's a Neil Gaiman story called the tale or the dream of a thousand cats. Yes, Sandman, yes. And it's all about how cats once ruled the world. Yep. But all the humans got together and dreamed that they ruled the world and took it over that way. And so, and the cats could take over the world again if they would could just get a thousand cats to dream it. And they, they're telling this story to this kitten and he goes, well, why don't we do it? And the end of the story is the older cat goes, have you ever seen a thousand cats do anything? <laughs> well, apparently I saw a hundred of them getting gourmet cat food at the same time. Yeah, that guy's, that guy's working on it. Okay, so we, we had... Um... We've had these stupid stories with the crime and people overreacting as a result of it. This one comes from the Philippines, surprisingly enough. There are some things I can see being regulated, like firearms or um, flamethrowers or... Do you know you could legally build a railgun if you want to? I don't know what a railgun is. It, it It's neat, and it'll kill you. Um... And cars and fireworks and explosives and chemicals. Shit needs to be regulated. I understand that. Because you can't just let somebody go running around with their own radio te- radioactive isotopes and shit. That would be a problem. But I think this one... No. No. Philippines. No more hammers to be sold inside malls. You can no longer buy hammers inside shopping malls. This after police and mall owners met on Monday and agreed that customers who will buy the tool will only be given a receipt, which they will have to use to claim the item outside the mall premises. This comes following the Sunday night rubbery in the uh, SM North EDSA. Uh, Police said, based on the closed caption footage, five to seven members of the so-called Martillo gang, I'm probably saying that wrong, uh, wrong, were part of the dairy robbery. Um... Apparently, what they had done was broken into the mall, stolen hammers, and then used them to break into other parts of the mall. So the solution, obviously, is to stop selling hammers. You know, this is just more propaganda from the anti-hammer lobby. (laughs) And maybe if all those security guards had hammers... (laughs) All you to stop a bad man with a hammer is one good man with a hammer uh i what or maybe mc hammer i want that gang to come back and and pick the most ridiculous goddamn thing and use that to break into places 
Yeah. We can't sell fishing poles anymore, people. They use them to break in. We can't sell them. They can't do With it. With strong enough shoes, you can break <laughs> into places. Like, Sorry, ladies. We can't sell heels anymore. We can't. Because you're just going to break into our places if we sell you the shoes. kind of another example of overreacting in really effective ways i i you could like effective ways in effect. you could effectively shut down the entire mall over like, time yeah you know how many things in a mall you could use to commit crimes with are you kidding me oh yes yes i do i do i very much no I used to work at a Sephora. You know how many little devices in there you could use to pick locks? And well, well, then obviously we need to stop selling those. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Be a lot of very angry women. I, I just, I... <laughs> Who thought this was the solution? Well, apparently the Philippines. Because this is, all right, all this is doing is adding this layer of annoyance to the process. And the thing is, <clears throat> next time they'll just bring their own hammers. <laughs> because if we outlaw hammers, only criminals will what? have a hammer. They didn't buy them the first time. I fucked that up, but still. We outlaw hammers. They didn't buy them the first time. They stole them. They weren't. So this law doesn't really prevent. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't prevent a damn thing. This it is. Joe Homemaker from being able to fix his front door. This is the human condition writ large. The absurdity yeah. of it all. We got problems, man. Um, speaking of, we got problems. Holy shit. Of course, Florida is making its uh, stop in. Florida. We really need to play Derek's Florida again. Yeah. They haven't heard that in a while. I'm sure there are people that have never heard that who watch the show, and it's a work of genius. They outdid themselves. They almost had the worst story of the week. So, um, did you go to see Frozen with your nephew? No. No. Oh. My nieces were more into that, but they're on Long Island, so I didn't get oh. to see it. But I heard it was good, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was It was apparently a, a movie everybody liked, but, um... Well... I don't think this one went down very well. Oh, I heard about this. It's horrible. Nymphomaniac trailer mistakenly shown at Frozen Screening. I'm not going to lie. I don't think this was an accident. I think this was some fucking douchebag who saw Fight Club one too many times. Children and parents ready for a screening of Frozen began at a cinema in Florida. Got a big shock when a sexually explicit, when sexually explicit image on the screen and said, you know, it's just waiting to see the animated feature, uh, which was delayed due to a technical error. With footage from another film, one featuring graphic sex. One audience member recognized the footage as the trailer for Nymphomaniac, an upcoming art house film from Danish director Lars von Trier. And that that <laughs> trailer, I don't know if you've seen it. It actually has like a split second shot of just straight up vulva. Like full screen. And it has a shot of like a woman spitting out cum that she's obviously just recently acquired. <laughs> That and that is what they all. We're gonna go see Frozen. We're gonna go see the snowman talking and ah. <laughs> but I, like I said, I don't believe for a second <clears throat> that this was an accident. This was some fucking douchebag who saw Fight Club one too many times and thinks it's an instruction manual because everybody knows this asshole. Where was Kyle last week? Every knows this asshole who's seen Fight Club too many times and thinks they're Tyler fucking Durden and they're so cool and subversive and counterculture and they don't actually do anything about it. They just no. talk a lot about Tyler Durden. Except this this, this Except twit. this guy did. So, you know, don't eat at the restaurant he works at either. These kids are going to have the weirdest sexual associations. Don't ask for, on your, don't ask for butter on your pop. <clears throat> this guy's working the concession. 
for the rest of their lives, these kids are going to have the worst sexual connections, Pavlovian responses. Yeah. Because they're, they're either going to be intimate and suddenly have flashbacks of Disney films, or go to a Disney film and get an erection and not or remember just why. start randomly humping snowmen. <laughs> like, tw- 12 years from now, if we're still doing this, we're going to do a story about, like, some 16-year-old kid who got arrested for straight-up fucking a snowman. Hey, they're fucking the snowman now, Tara! Wait and a second. we're going to be like, how does this happen? And then we're going to go, wait. We know. No. Yeah. But, um... Our last story is definitely the worst. Um... Nelson Mandela, very uh, important politician, um, one of the most influential men in the uh, 21st century, or the 20th century, um, died, passed away, and the world had, in a, in a stadium in South Africa, they had a huge um, funeral, and, well, so it was a it was a wake or some type. Well, it was kind of like a giant memorial, yeah. and they had the funeral yesterday i think and they had various um dignitaries and they had you know uh they had from germany we had germany what that's why they won't release the birth certificate Eh. he's a fucking kraut what they always have it's watching No, I did not mean that. I was obviously joking. I am not racist against Germans. I'm sure they're all lovely people. I, I used to work with a German girl. She was lovely. Just so I don't get angry tweets. What they all have there is, on these big events, is a sign language interpreter. It's a person who stands there and signs. Yes. And Usually correctly. <clears throat> let's have a look. We, we, we have some footage of this gentleman. Here's the gentleman who in question, who was at the, uh, the event... Um, we see him here signing, and uh, very into it, very stoic looking. Knows what he's, you know, everything. But um, only trouble was, um, deaf people started noticing during the ceremony. He's not doing any. He's this is this is sign gibberish. What he is doing right now. When when the when the sign language interpreter starts doing the macarena. you kind of know you have a problem this guy apparently wandered past security what was got in there stood next to some of the most powerful men and women on the planet with it he's a he could turn right now and throat that guy if he wanted to nobody could stop he he could he could crush that guy's trachea before anyone had a chance to stop him. How the fuck did this happen? Well, they say, <clears throat> I thought I read somewhere that he's done a lot of these events in the past. Like, that's how he got this gig, is he's done a lot of, and somehow, like, nobody's noticed. <laughs> he just, he's been getting away with it for, like, a couple of years now. And then it came out that he was, he's, like, previously charged with rape and murder. Yeah, that's where it gets and worse. Like, how has he been getting these jobs all this Because we, we have that we have the story there. Um background check. Mandela inter- involved in burning men to death. So he's he's been uh, you know killing murdering, and just wandered up to, you know. And the story he gave for what happened was that he's, he said he was schizophrenic and that he was having like a hallucinatory episode and he was hallucinating that angels were attacking the stadium they were in and he was trying not to freak out and get tackled by security. Maybe that's true. I don't know. The schizophrenic community has come out and said that that's not how schizophrenic episodes work. No. So, I my, mean, maybe, my... maybe he was hallucinating and he misused the word schizophrenic. I, I, maybe he's misdiagnosed. Or maybe, maybe he's just an asshole. Maybe he does a ton of bath salts. I don't know. 
But like that's that's his claim. They're saying it's not true. Well, regardless of his issues, my issue is this man was a foot away from my president. And quite a few other luminaries. I'm just, let's look at this headline. Involved in burning men to death. Yeah, you gotta wonder. I mean, obviously they threw this thing together very quickly, but you gotta wonder where the background check went there. Yes! I mean, I, I could, at this point, I could have gotten in there. I, I probably could have gone in there wearing a bozo wig and, you know, fucking sausages wrapped around my neck. Yeah, like with the history this guy has, I'm confused as to how he got through the screening. I could have been up there doing the YMCA. Yeah, like, I, I don't know what happened here. And I, he's just, I, this, this guy is serious. I, I, he's got his issues. Whatever his issues are, I don't care. It's the security. It's their job to stop this shit from happening. And not only did they fuck it up, they fucked it up on such a grand scale. The entire world watched them fuck it up. And the thing is, I'm not saying, like, obviously, I, you know, I have a mental mm -hmm. illness. I'm certainly not saying don't hire the mentally ill, you know, yeah. like, schizophrenia, if he's in treatment, wouldn't make him unsuitable for this job. It's more the criminal background that concerns me. Like, he was charged with rape, with burning people alive, like. But they just let him wander on in. It's not something you put up with a lot of world leaders that's not someone you put next to bishop tutu desmond fucking tutu who's the sweetest old man yeah like and this guy he's desmond tutu standing there and this guy could have just reached over and went and no more desmond desmond tutu what the fuck and that's not something you want at nelson mandela's funeral for sure let alone anywhere <laughs> no you don't want someone popping desmond tutu's neck anywhere but mandela's funeral would have been particularly bad that would have been like the cherry on top of the horrible Sunday there. So I guess the, uh, the, the, the okay, my hand in the in channel. I will not buy this record. It is scratched. Would you like to go back to my place? Bouncy, bouncy. My hovercraft is full of eels. Uh, so I, we learned this week. Background check. Yes, please. Don't just ask somebody. I had to fill out, I once applied for a job at Godiva <clears throat> selling chocolate, and I had to fill out a, no lie, like eight page job application. They were gonna run a credit check on me. They wanted a criminal background check. They wanted like 10 different references. Like, like I was applying, I, like I'm now convinced that Godiva is actually a front <laughs> for like the NSA. <laughs> Because the amount of information they wanted for me to sit there and sell truffles was a little bit absurd. So I'm pretty sure that if I'd managed to get that job, I would now be a super spy. I would now be like Black Widow. I think it's a front. But I just, it, and they did much more. It can't be that expensive. If fucking Godiva can run this super ass background check. Where the fuck was the Secret Service? Well, it wasn't their gig. Well, it was South Africa's gig. Well, they don't fuck. They up. weren't in charge, of, but they weren't in charge of the thing, and they weren't like it would be wrong for the Secret Service to run in and take over someone's funeral. You know, like it wasn't their gig. You have to count on the intelligence and security of other nations to do their job, and I think for the most part they did. <laughs> With you know, I mean, nothing blew up. Nobody got shot. Good job, South Africa. But like this one thing kind of fell through the cracks and it's a little scary. This is one thing. This is a big thing. Yeah. We learned this week that it's it's never too early to start celebrating. But it is a little too it it's it is a little too early to be doing it while driving drunk. Waterboy sequel. <laughs> I just I, this that poor guy. He's he's going to have one of the worst prison ex as, as if any prison experience is good, but he's going to have one of the worst. Yeah. He had a tough night. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't think they're going to make him wear the elf <laughs> costume in prison. He's probably going to get the orange jumpsuit like everybody else. You never know. It is so Louisiana. It was just the night in the drunk tank. That was probably really unpleasant. It, well, no, if it's a night in the drunk tank, they don't give you the orange jumpsuit, I don't think. No, but I'm saying if he gets convicted and goes to prison, like oh, he's yeah. in jail and prison. Yeah. He was in the lockup for the night. That was probably really unpleasant. If he goes to prison, he's probably not going to be forced to wear the elf outfit the whole time. That would be cruel and unusual punishment. On the other hand, Louisiana. Is Louisiana a really fucked up place legally? I went to New Orleans once. I had a great time. Not Decker. entirely, but it has its issues. Oh. Uh, yeah, New Orleans, it's got its issues. Mm. But it's mostly the politicians. Um, Isn't it always? We've learned... you can sell after they've been returned to a store but meat isn't one of them anything that has been rubbed on someone's crotch particularly foodstuffs particularly but not limited to foodstuffs if it's been inside someone's pants do not sell it to someone that is not that person The London Broil cannot remarry. I'm just trying to think about, okay, you had this in your pants. Would you like to buy it? I mean, obviously they wanted it. Uh, it's not. Oh, anything for a buck. If you like steak, you should have put a ring on it. Not, you know, in your pants. Speaking of anything for a buck, we we learned that it, cr you can make crime pay, just what you pay for with it is kind of important. If you're paying for a little cat army... I mean, hmm. it's nice that he wanted to feed all the cats. That's, that's good. His he heart didn't. was in the right place. But the cats don't need steak and fresh tuna he didn't they want to probably feed would have been okay with you know no he's he's friskies. he he wanted he wanted his own army that's the thing i wouldn't mind a feral cat army that's <laughs> badass <laughs> because I, have you ever been attacked by an angry cat yes my sister had the meanest cat in the world when we were kids. And this cat would leap at you and dig her front teeth and claws right into your hairline. And I'm here to tell you, they wouldn't do that to people at Gitmo. That's the most painful shit ever. I mean, I'm sure there are more painful things. Like, you know, I'm sure something involving the testicles would hurt worse. But it's really fucking painful. And, and that was a domesticated cat. So, like, an army of angry, well-fed, feral cats is kind of a terrifying thing, actually. Maybe he wasn't that stupid. I don't think he was stupid. I think he was perhaps over... over zealous with the feeding of the cats, like... Everything in, in moderation. Oh, I moderation. mean, cats will try and tell you they're not going to eat their cat food. But, as my, my dad always said... When they're good and hungry, they're going to eat it. Like, the cat will always, if you if you give them the dry cat food, they give you this baleful glare, like you expect me to eat the swill, human. That doesn't mean you go out and rob a store to feed the fucking cat. It means the cat needs to get over itself. If you give it 10 minutes and you're not looking, that cat will deign to eat the dry food. Uh, we learned this week that... The hammers, for fuck's sake, if... Uh, Won't somebody think of the poor nails? Just because you make an object illegal does not mean you have solved the problem. Clearly. In this case, it was not the selling of the hammer. It, and I don't think in the case of something like hammers that making it illegal should ever have been considered a solution in the first place. That's a tool for other things. Like, 
like I get I'm not a huge gun person I get why people want to make guns illegal because a gun kind of only exists for one reason there's only one use for a gun you're not going to do home repair with a gun you're not gonna well repair- you are and then you're going to end up on this show but like you know knives there's different uses for knives like hammers there's actual practical applications for hammers so yeah it's it, it, i understand why they won't let me buy dynamite and shit yeah but a oh. hammer what computer ronin he was a purloiner well done well done it's not what that word means. Um, no, no, no. We're going back to the cat guy. And finally, tonight, we learned you are not Tyler fucking Durden. I yeah. know you think you're that cool, but you're not really that cool. And here's the thing. Tyler Durden was a fucking asshole. Not a good role model. Pick a better role model. He was a dick. You want to be an iconoclast? You want to be an anarchist? That's all cool. Pick a better role model. It's funny how people watch movies where people are complete and total cockbags, and they're like, I want to be that guy! You're sitting in the back of the car on the way home, Tommy. You're sitting in the trunk of the car on the way home. And we learned that my boyfriend's never going to speak to me again. Yeah. Although, great ringtone. He's very sweet, and he bought me a Christmas tree. He did. And he's a cat person. I'm going to have to buy him so many marshmallow peeps now. People are going to be calling me at MAGFest just to hear, Crazy kitties! They're going to... Maybe we can make that go viral, then he'd really kill me. 